All right, hello again, everybody. This is a Fantasy Sports Boss. Welcome to the Fantasy Sports Boss podcast. It is uh, Wednesday, September 11th, 2024. And of course, um, the date uh, in and of itself uh, stands alone as a, uh, a national day of mourning. And certainly here in New York, it was uh, um, a day that I'll certainly never forget. Uh, and, and, and anybody who lived through that, uh, especially in the Tri-State area or lost a loved one, uh, to the to the tragedy that was 9/11 um, <clears throat> certainly understands that the pain uh, that that day brings forth to anybody who um, you know like I said who was impacted from that so I wanted to uh, just acknowledge that before going into the uh, program today and you know even all these years later was it 23 years now I still think about it from time to time you know like did that actually really happen um, so just a couple of couple of thoughts on 9/11 um, which, you know, should still and always be a national uh, day of mourning, um, you know, uh, uh, just for the sheer, you know, magnitude of what took place that day. Just an awful day, um, without, without a doubt. So, um, <clears throat> now with that said, I wanted to get into uh, some issues today. May, you know, let's start off with the injuries, because there's a lot of injury news already. I mean, we're only into week two, and the, and the biggest one... Outside of Christian McCaffrey, and we'll get to that in a minute, um, is that Sean McVay met with the media today, and he basically said that Puka Nakula could wind up missing more than a minimum of four games. Of course, he was placed um, uh, uh, on the injured list with the uh, knee injury that he suffered uh, in the season opener. And this was just, you know, a continuation of what uh, first cropped up uh, in the preseason. <clears throat> So he went on the IR list. He's going to be out the next four games, but McVay made it sound like he's going to miss more time. Of course, Demarcus Robinson, now the number two wide receiver, and Cooper Cup, who looked like the 2021 version of Cooper Cup um, on uh, uh, Sunday Night Football, becomes that much more uh, imposing, interesting, PPR, all of those things. So, um, you know, definitely a little bit concerning uh, to hear that. And, and again, like... If you were listening to this program at all during the summer, um, I told you not to draft Puka Nakua at cost, all right? He settled into that early second round. He was going late first in some uh, some leagues. He was settling into that early second round uh, territory and grossly, uh, grossly overpriced there. And when you take into consideration that Cooper Cup has just an uncanny chemistry with... Um, <clears throat> Matthew Stafford, then it was easy to realize and understand how how it really just was kind of foolish to pay that price uh, on Puka Nakua. Now, obviously, that's another uh, a story for another day. He's going to be out uh, for four games minimum. Now it looks like he could be out longer. Another guy going on IR today was Audrick Estime. So the Broncos, Audrick Estime was somebody who, you know, if you're in a, a dynasty league, he, would, he had some interest, but um, it was minimally involved in the opener was more like a long-term hedge that maybe down the line he can get some playing time. But um, it now looks to be strictly uh, Javante Williams and um, Jaleel McLaughlin. Jaleel McLaughlin got more touches. And when you look at this backfield, um, there was some thought that maybe Javante Williams was going to have a comeback season. He looked good in the preseason. Last year was a disaster as he was coming back uh, from the torn uh, ACL, MCL, real serious knee injury in 2022. And he didn't play well at all last year. And he didn't look good in the opener either. Um, wasn't involved in the passing game. Jaleel McLaughlin, who's got speed to burn, is really splitting carries with Javante Williams and is strictly the third down back. All right. So, um, you know, it's 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 uh, going to possibly help Javante Williams. <clears throat> so if you're holding, I have Javante Williams on two teams. I'm kind of embarrassed to admit that. He's, he's a depth piece. He was a running back three on both of my teams, or maybe even a running back four um, on one of my teams. But <clears throat> I did not start him in the opener, um, and I'm certainly not going to start him going forward until we see any kind of um, promising signs there. I mean, if you guys remember, when he first came into the league, uh, he, looked, he looked fantastic. Like He had good speed, was a tremendous receiver. He looked like a guy who was going to be a first-round pick in PPR leagues. And then, of course, disaster struck with a knee injury. He's just never been the same since, right? Some guys just don't bounce back from these injuries. You know, we've seen a lot of success stories over the years, but some guys just don't make it, and it looks like Javante Williams could be that guy. <clears throat> All right, Russell Wilson was limited. Say Justin Fields will get the start. Um, 
against the Denver Broncos. So um, no opportunity for Russell Wilson to get revenge on the Denver Broncos. Uh, so Justin Fields will get the start. And listen, I said this to you before last week when Justin Fields, I begged you all to stop what you were doing and pick him up off waivers. Now, he didn't put up a big uh, point total in fantasy-wise last week. It was a tough matchup for him. But if he wins again this week, and chances are against a bad Denver Broncos team, he will. Um, it is certainly more than likely that Justin Fields is not going to lose his job. Right? Things were so close in terms of handicapping the two of them in the preseason that it would surprise nobody if Justin Fields holds on to the job. And we've seen what Justin Fields is capable of in fantasy. He's a top 12 quarterback. Um, he rushed, you know, 10, what, 10 to 12 times in the opener. And again, it was no breathtaking place, but he's fully capable of doing that. Like he's a runner on par with Jaden Daniels and Lamar Jackson. Like those three are kind of like the cream of the crop when it comes to running quarterbacks. So it is certainly... Uh, well within the realm of possibility that this is now Justin Fields' job. And if he's available anywhere, you pick him up. Absolutely. A top 12 quarterback that's sitting in the waiver wire, it just shouldn't happen. All right. Um, <clears throat> Matt LaFleur caused a start today. He said that he's open to the idea of Jordan Love starting in week two when it was assumed he would miss about three weeks. Um, he says he doesn't need to practice uh, to get back. And this seems like something that it's probably coach speak. I can't see Jordan Love coming back that quickly. Um, but just the fact that they're talking about it is a good sign. Remember, this was a major, major bullet that was dodged. I mean, it looked like Jordan Love had ripped up his knee. He was going to be out for the season. He it was an MCL injury, not an ACL. And it looks like he's going to be good to go probably by the end of the month at the latest. And the fact that they're even talking about him possibly coming back um, early as soon as this week is, is big news. Jamison Williams was limited with an ankle injury. Um, you know, it, the fact that he was limited today means he should be okay. But um, a guy with a history of, of injury is something to watch. And again, I, I said on the live stream the other day, I have zero concern about Amon Ross St. Brown. Okay? It was just the way the target distribution went. Uh, the Rams shaded toward St. Brown's side of the field, and Jamison Williams got open. And when you have the speed that Jamison Williams has... It's going to create big plays and create opportunities. Now, opposing defenses are certainly going to be aware of Jameson Williams, and that's going to soften things up for Amon Ross St. Brown going forward. I don't think there's any issue there. You're not even going to be able to buy low. People are, are know how good Amon Ross St. Brown is. Um, all right, MCL sprain for Roma, Roma Dunze. He did not play. Uh, Matt Eberflus is calling him day-to-day. Um, I don't see him starting in week two. You know, Keenan Allen is also banged up. He's got a heel injury. And he did not practice as well. All of a sudden, the Chicago Bears, who we thought, you know, had this loaded trio of receivers and receiving back in DeAndre Swift and, and Cole Command and Gerald Evertonen, they could be down to just DJ Moore among their wideouts for, for week two. Um, you know, it's not going to be easy for Caleb Williams, who did not play well last week, all right? Um, and I, I think that <clears throat> certainly... This is something to really pay attention to because in, even in a, in a super flex league, like Caleb Williams is not an automatic start, all right? I think the world of the other kid, he's got tons of talent. It's going to come to the forefront eventually, but Jaden Daniels, give me him over Caleb Williams any day now as far as starting. Christian McCaffrey was limited today. He's got the calf. Um, Kyle Shanahan, listen, things are getting a little out of hand here with this. There was mention about an Achilles injury, and instantly, oh my God, he's going to be out for the season. No, that's that's not it. Um, even Kyle Shanahan said he's not going on the IR. That's not happening. All right. Um, what I can, what I would say about this, um, both Adam Schefter and Ian Rappaport have already come out and said McCaffrey may not play this week. It, he probably won't. There's no reason to play him. When you have Jordan Mason coming off a 147-yard game, if and I've been saying this for two years now, and the 49ers didn't do this last year, dial back the touches. And I'm talking real-world football, which will impact fantasy. The 49ers can win the Super Bowl. They need a healthy Christian McCaffrey. They finally have a backup they can depend on in Jordan Mason. Dial back the touches. 
Like what the Lions did with Jameer Gibbs early last season. They barely gave him the ball the first month of the season, and then he was gangbusters by the end of the year. They need to treat McCaffrey almost like put him in glass for a little bit. He's 28. Tons of mileage on his body. Jordan Mason has ability. He can do the job. If you're a Christian McCaffrey owner, you drafted him number one overall, well, clearly you didn't listen to me because I told you not to do that. And I took a lot of heat on here. How could you not draft Christian McCaffrey number one? He's the best player in fantasy. Blah, blah, blah. Thousand yard runner and receiver this year. You watch. Great. Not taking anything away from him talent wise. But again, the, one of the cardinal sins that people in fantasy football community do is they ignore, they don't get out a year early. They get out a year too late. It can be tough to resist. Listen. He, had, he was beyond phenomenal last year. You're holding the number one pick. Oh my God, I can get Christian McCaffrey. Look what he did last year. But he's 28. I, I don't draft backs 28 years old if they have, have had high workloads. You could say, oh, you own Aaron Jones. He hasn't had a high workload the last couple of years. He's, been, he's missed time with injury. He's a younger 29. McCaffrey's an older 28. Just based on volume, you know this. I'm not, I'm not, it's not rocket science. So, Brees Hall, B. John Robinson, CeeDee Lamb, all, I had all of them ahead of McCaffrey on my cheat sheets. And I don't think McCaffrey's playing this week. So, already it's turning into a disaster for McCaffrey owners. So, I don't think he's playing this week. Jordan Addison did not practice this week with an ankle injury. He's not going to play this week. I doubt it. Um, listen, if you're a Justin Jefferson owner, you feel good that Sam Darnold played well. But I, I will, I will caveat it, caveat the point with the fact he was playing the New York Giants, who can't do anything right. That game was an utter disgrace. If you're the Giants. Like I said on Sunday, it was a non-competitive piece of garbage. I mean, John Mara's got to be beside himself by what he saw. So I'm not fully in on the Sam Darnold, you know, renaissance. But like Alex Smith, like Geno Smith, maybe he just needed a change of scenery. It's possible. Justin Jefferson did not exactly light the world on fire. I still have my reservations about what the ceiling is there, even though he scored. Because Sam Darnold's never supported a wide receiver one in fantasy. <clears throat> All right, Lamar Jackson returned to practice. Nobody knows why he missed Monday's practice. Um, it's a mystery. So, you know, it, you're always running that risk with Lamar Jackson that he's going to get hurt because of all the running he does. And he ran a lot in the opener. He took some hits. They're still not running him around the goal line. But he he's still, he's a top, easy top five quarterback in fantasy. Excuse me. Uh, T. Higgins did not practice Wednesday. Um, it, nothing's changed here. The guy's always hurt. You know, I, I don't think, I, I, you just can't depend on them. And the Bengals always lose their opener. So I'm not, I'm not going crazy yet about Joe Burrow. I think Joe Burrow's going to be fine. Jamar Chase still dealing with the distractions from the contract. I think ultimately they will be fine. But T. Higgins, this is why I don't own him every season. So Kyle Murray got a little testy today. He says, it's, quote, not my job to force the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr., Okay, then. You know, he's a baby. Uh, you know, I the guy is a baby. The whole thing with the video games, the fact that they even had to discuss that shows you how unprofessional he is. Um, you know, it, it's, you shouldn't have drafted Marvin Harrison Jr. in the second round. It was a complete blind pick. We've never seen him in an NFL game. All right. Even though the Cardinals scored all, scored all those points, even Trey McBride did virtually nothing. Like, it was it was weird. I mean, it was Greg Dortch, James Conner, and Kyle Murray running all over the place. I think ultimately, like, Trey McBride will be fine. I think Marvin Harrison Jr. will be fine. But 
Is he going to supply that value that of being a second round pick? I don't think so. All right, let's get to the Miami Dolphin running back situation. So Raheem Mostert already has rolled out with a chest injury. It didn't take long. The guy's ancient. I think he's, what, 33 now. Um, and now Devin Achan, with his ankle injury, is a game-time decision. All right, he did some work today. Got him through a walk-through practice. But, hey, listen, a 50-50 proposition. You have Jeff Wilson there. You have the uh, the kid from Tennessee. I don't know if the Dolphins are going to chance it with Devin H. But he, and again, this is the problem with Devin H. I said it in the summer. He was arguably the biggest boomer bust player in fantasy at the running back position. All right. Anthony Richardson to me was the biggest boomer bust player, period. But Devin H. was the biggest boomer bust running back. Breathtaking talent. This is, is Jamal Charles. Anybody remembers Jamal Charles? That's what Devin A. Chan is. But he can't stay healthy. He's always hurt. He can only take on so many touches before um, before more problems arise. All right? So when you decide to draft uh, Devin A. Chan, these are the things you have to deal with going in. And... I just, it gets annoying after a while. Now, Jeff Wilson, Jeff Wilson could be looking at a decent amount of, uh, of work this week. So, like, for me, I have Devin Singletary as my second running back in one of my leagues. I'm looking at Jeff Wilson closely because if Devin A. Chan doesn't play, I might just throw Jeff Wilson in there. Now, again, they're going to get other, other players involved, but, um, you know, Jeff Wilson has ability. I think he's well worth picking up uh, if you need somebody for Thursday Night Football. Um, mm, 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 Wilson's already involved. Miami's running back rotation. Five carries for 26 yards. He ran well. Um, mm, 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 Jalen Wright, to have a roll, blah, blah, blah. He was a healthy and active week one. So, listen. I think Wright's going to get his time eventually. But this, to me, looks like a Jeff Wilson game, and it could be a bell cow game against Buffalo, who allowed the Cardinals to do really whatever they wanted offensively last week. So um, this is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on, for sure. Um, yeah, so a, a couple of things. So that's the injury report for today. Um, and also, we got to keep an eye on, uh, on Kenneth Walker, right? So Kenneth Walker... Still dealing with an abdominal injury. This is another guy who just can't ever stay healthy. I didn't see an update on Kenneth Walker. Um, I'll look at it now. But there's another guy who just can't ever stay healthy. Uh, all right, let's see. Kenneth Walker. Um, McDonald says he won't. He's, he's not sure he's going to practice Wednesday. He wants to take things day by day. So, um it sounds like he's going to be day-to-day. -day. They're not going to force him uh, this week. All right, so during the live stream on uh, Monday, I was just I was talking about some of the players that, uh, especially at the running back position, like Ramadre Stevenson, uh, you know, James Cook, even Kyra Williams, uh, Tony Pollard, who really got the lion's share of carries, no split back, backfield to speak of. And it really... It, I feel like the bell cow back is starting to come back in vogue. There's more guys getting the lion's share of carries than I've seen in a long time. Um, so that's something that to, to keep an eye on as well. But um, another guy that going the wrong way and at the receiver position, Terry McLaurin. So I spoke about how Jaden Daniels just did not throw the ball well at all. Like, it, it evoked Justin Fields' comparisons. Like, Jaden Daniels struggled. He did not, did not throw the ball well at all. Fumbled it three times. The vo passing volume itself is very low. If you're a Terry McLaurin owner, I'd be very, very concerned. All right? Very, very concerned about Terry McLaurin. Um, it just, you know, I, I don't know. Um, I, I don't think we're going to get that Terry McLaurin uptick in value that many thought was possible now that they had a they drafted a, a blue chip quarterback. I think Jaden Daniels still has a lot to learn as a passer. This is what we've been saying about Der uh, uh, Justin Fields. So, I mean, 
Does it happen for Terry McLaurin? I don't know, but I don't think you can grade him as anything more than a wide receiver three. And that's generally what he's been throughout his career. Dependable guy, gets his 1,000 yards, his 70 catches, um, but doesn't ever go beyond that. Okay? Um, oh, some of the other things I wanted to talk about today. So, yeah, so let me look at the – let me pull up the uh, – the schedule. We got the Miami Dolphins, Buffalo Bills, um, Thursday. Oh, Anthony Richardson. Let me talk about Anthony Richardson for a second. So Anthony Richardson, another one who struggles to throw the football. But unlike the I do like him as a better passer than Fields and Jaden Daniels. Um Anthony Richardson to me could absolutely break fantasy football this season. Let me just pull up his his number. So he only completed 9 of 19 in the opener, right? Um, so he really struggled as a passer. On a really bad passing day, he put up 30 fantasy points. Two touchdowns in the passing game, one rushing. Uh, it, to, to, to have a poor game throwing the ball and still, and not even get 60 yards rushing and still post 30 fantasy points, that shows you what Anthony Richardson is capable of this year. He could break fantasy. When he has that good game where he's completing passes and chucking it all over the place, he's going to break the scoreboard. Now, he's allergic to sliding. He's allergic about getting down so he doesn't get hit and get hurt. But Anthony Richardson is the real deal. I don't have any shares of him, but I'm not even going to deny the fact that he is unbelievable and could rule fantasy football this season. All right, so with that said, going to jump off now. Hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. Going to post another one tomorrow, so look for that. Um, and of course, we have games starting tomorrow, so there'll be more videos on that and the injuries that come uh, uh, across. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and more um, analysis videos will be posted as well, so stay tuned for that. Until then, we will chat soon.